Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Summer 24 release features and we're going to focus on admin and some really exciting flow features. So stay tuned. The first one I want to talk about is the search features. There are very exciting search features that I want to talk about. And the first one is Einstein search will be enabled by default. And the second one is really exciting. Um, you can now control what you want your users to see or not see when they search for certain records. Um, so if you go to your search settings, so just go to your setup and type for search and you should see a new thing called search manager. When you go there, you can see you have search configuration. So you can configure what you want your users to see. And this is based on the profile level, not on the permission set. So something to keep in mind. So let's say I want my admins to only see certain type of accounts. So I'm just going to set up admin here. Probably not a real good use case, but let's say you're, you have different types of profiles. You can definitely set that up and you can also set up the channel. Um, for now, I'm going to just focus on the global search bar, but you can also do certain things based on the lightning knowledge component on what knowledge you want to show them. So let's save and continue. And in this case, um, you can see I have all the objects here that searchable is checked on account. So the first thing you can control is let's say you did not want the address to be included in search results. So when people are searching for something, usually it will filter through all the various text fields because it's using SOSL. Um, but you can control if you don't want to use certain things here. So you can exclude things from search. So that's pretty cool. But here you can also set rules. So let's say I want my users to only search for accounts that are of certain type. Maybe for, you know, there is a profile who only deals with a direct customer type. So I'm going to just select that and hit save. So now I have only customer direct saved here. Now what I want to go back in my search, just going to refresh my screen and I want to show you that if I go to all accounts that I have, I have different types of accounts in my test org. I've got customer direct prospect and customer channel and our search setting is customer direct. So I'm going to try to search for a customer channel account. So I'm going to just say gene point. And as you can see, I am not seeing any accounts, even though I clearly have a gene point account. So, that's how you can control your search results. So note that this is not removing accessibility. So if they have access to that record, they can still get to it through sharing rules and whatnot. So it's not hiding the records from the users. It is just making the search more um, relatable to the users. So I can definitely see a lot of use cases. This can be a really powerful tool for you to play around and try out with. It is in beta, so just a call out there. Another thing you can also do is objects to always search. That's also in beta. So if you want certain users to always search for certain things, you can also do that here. And just go to here, edit, and you can choose different objects. So if I want my system admins to always search for accounts first, I can do that. So this is also pretty cool. And this is also in beta. So try this out as well. Next features I want to talk about is on the app builder page. So let it, let's head on to an opportunity page. Exciting feature here is that now you can show fields from related objects. So, so let's say I wanted to show different account fields on the opportunity page without having to create formula fields for every single field. That I can do by just using dynamic page. So first step is you have to upgrade your pages to dynamic page if you haven't done that already. Once you do that, you will come to here, you will see two options, components and fields. If you go to fields, there you will see more options now. So first thing you'll definitely see here is universally required fields. This is also new. So now you can see in one glance what are the required fields. So that's pretty awesome. Then once you go to, let's say, count name, you can see that there is a carrot icon. This usually means that you can select and get all the account fields as well. So if I wanted to, let's say, show the account source, what else I want to see? I want to see the annual revenue of the account. That will be important information. So as you can see, I'm just dragging and dropping fields 
that are on the account that are not on the opportunity. I'm also going to put the account name because I may not have all the data populated. So that's it. That's pretty awesome to be able to do that. Um, let's save this. And let's head on to the page to see what you Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, I can now see account source, account name and account revenue without creating formula fields. So you can imagine how many formula fields you can cut down on. Obviously, if you wanted to do reporting on other things, if you have formula fields for other reason, that is good. But if you are just looking to show data on the account page or the opportunity page of the parent records, um, you can now just use App Builder to do that using dynamic record pages. Uh, keep in mind, this will not work for polymorphic fields. So if you have, um, for example, task is a great example. You cannot use this on task to show the what ID because that's a polymorphic relationship. All right, so there are other minor enhancements on the App Builder itself. You can now set visibility based on form factor. So let's say you wanted to show different um, components based on whether it's mobile or desktop, you can do that. So if I go to component visibility, I now have a device and I can say form factor equals to desktop or phone. This will be useful if you have mobile users and you want to show different things for desktop and phone without having to maintain two different record pages. So this is also going to cut down on the amount of record pages that you may have supporting mobile and um, desktop. As well as uh, speaking of mobile, you can now also have dynamic actions for mobile as well. This was not available until now, but now you can have dynamic actions working for mobile pages as well. All right, so let's get out of App Builder and look at some exciting flow features. This is something I'm really excited about. So I'm just gonna, without wasting any time, go to my flow builder. Just gonna start a flow and we're gonna look at some enhancements there. I'm gonna create a new flow. So the first one, which I'm sure you must have heard about, and if not, we can now use repeater element in flow. What does that mean? So until now, um, if you had a requirement where you needed to create multiple records, you would have to create multiple screen elements. So you'd have to add multiple screens to gather all the information and then save it um, or use some sort of package. But now you can do out of the box. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's just look at it real quick. So I'm gonna just start a screen and you will see there is a repeater beta element. So just drag and drop that because that's what we're testing for. What I did notice is it was not taking the field. So I created a record variable, I tested this earlier. Um, you cannot actually pop in a record variable right now. What you can pop inside of repeater is very limited, but I'm sure as it gets added, more and more features will come on. So right now we can definitely use text in there. So I'm going to drag and drop the text inside of the repeater. So that's keep in mind, we should do that. And so I'm just going to call it first name because I'm creating a form essentially. I also noticed I could not use the standard component that the name component, but it's in beta. So I'm okay with that last name. And let's also put birth date, let's put date field in there. So this is just a form currently. We are not saving the data yet. What it will look like is you're going to see an add. So this is new. I didn't do anything custom. All I did is added the repeater element and now we are saying add. So basically it will allow your users to create multiple records from one screen without having to use multiple screens or any workarounds. Now, since we need to save it, the way you are going to do that is by using a loop. Anytime you're creating multiple records, you have to use a loop. So let's loop through form, let's just call that. And automatically you have a repeater element. So that's awesome. We're just going to repeat through that. Through all items. And that's it. And then inside that loop, we're going to now 
use an assignment because now we need to assign what we are getting. So assign form value to lead variable because in this case I'm creating a lead. You might be creating a contact or whatever your requirement is. First, you need to create a resource of that type of what you're trying to create. In this case, I'm trying to create a lead. So I'm going to use a lead variable and do that. So, and then I'm just going to start assigning things to it. So I'm just going to say first name should be equal to, as you can see, I have the loop. I'm just going to hit dot first name because the reason I'm seeing that is because I added those inputs inside that repeater. So that's important here. Perfect. So that's our assignment to the variable. But remember, now we only assign one single variable in order to create all of the things that there might be. So user might be picking like multiple leads. So we need to add them to a collection because anytime you're creating a record or multiple records at once, you need them in a collection. So in order to do that, first you will assign everything to a single variable. Then you will add lead to collection. So it's almost like you're taking a paper and a file and you're putting everything in a file and then you're sending the file at once. That's the analogy I like to use. So now we need to create a new resource. We're going to call it collection of lead or you can say list of lead and record. And this time we'll check this box. What this box does is it makes it a multiple values. It makes it a collection, essentially. Let's do the lead here, and that's it for this one. And then we're going to add the lead that we just created. We're going to do var lead. And in this case, you can remove the dot because it's the file, and this is one page of the file. And so we're done pretty much inside the loop. Now all we're going to do is create take a create element, create records, and we're going to create lead from here and multiple leads, do a collection of lead and that's it for this one. And then save your flow and let's debug this and test this out. Add Team, team. All right. And then once you hit next, you should see some leads are generated. So if I go back to my screen, we just got those leads created. Awesome. Next pro feature I want to talk about is the reactivity within the screen element. And now we can have the text template reactive as well. So what does that mean? That means if you let's say collect a name or any other inputs within the flow and you want it to display in a text template that is going to be dynamic. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to use the same flow for this scenario and we're going to just put a text up here as the input. So I'm just going to call it text input. Not feeling very creative today. Um, and then I'm going to display the text and it doesn't have to be this example. This is just as an example to show you what that looks like. Um, so we have the text input and in the display text, we are going to use a text template here. So we're going to create a new resource and this is going to be a type of text template. And this is usually used when you want to store a text throughout the flow and use it throughout the flow. So I'm going to just say hello template and then I'm going to say hello name of input. So let's say that's the name of a person. So what I really want to show here is that just adding this will be reactive now. So as soon as I enter something in this text input, you're going to see this updated. So let's check it out. So right now, hello is empty. So I'm just going to start typing my name and as you can see, this is reactive. So there are many use cases. You can also have certain um, calculator. So if there is a 
calculation going on or currency if you are trying to show a product price based on selection that the user entered you can start to show those things right away here quickly out of the box let's talk about a maintenance feature that i really like we all have been there um, we are working on a really big flow and you have to take a break or maybe you are still waiting on the requirements but you're not quite ready to save the flow yet but in current state what happens is if you have a variable selected like this, let's say you know what the left side should be, but you don't know what the right side should be, or whatever that might be, you just have left it empty. Current state, it doesn't let you save it. You have to enter something here or you can delete this. But going forward, even if it is like this, I can just simply exit out of this, save the flow, and it will let me save the flow. There will be warning saying that um, you have all these empty things, you cannot activate it but at least you can save your work. So from admin perspective, this will be really useful, um, especially if you have incomplete requirements. So you can continue to build your flow and um, save them, but go back and add them. Make sure you add them, otherwise you can't activate them. So that's pretty cool, really like that. Another exciting feature is there is no more limits to how many past and waiting interviews you can have. So anything that used to use the wait, pause uh, options in the flow, um, or the time triggered workflows or flows, um, they don't have limits anymore. With that being said, it still counts towards your org. There's another admin feature as well. Now you can access what flows are being used by an email alert. So if you go to email alerts and you, you just need to know what flows are using that email alerts, that will be available. Let's go to email alerts and just going to go to this one. And before you only had this rules using email alert. Now you can see flows using this email alert as well. There are some other small enhancements in the flows. So please look at the release notes as well. I'll link that in the description. And there is a funny feature that I want to talk about. We all love multi-select pick list. And for this one, uh, basically Salesforce will now give you a warning sign anytime you are starting to create a multi-select pick list. I just find it really funny because we all have run into so many limitations with multi-select, but this is one of those things we end up having to create based on the requirements. <laughs> but now there is a limitation pop-up. Um, so it's basically saying, do you really want to create this or not? Um, but yes, we do. We all love multi-select pick list. So it's going to go ahead and create it. And if you have not played around with user access policies, highly recommend doing that. Now user access policies will also have uh, queues, groups, and pick list values. So check it out. It is a really good way to automatically assign permission sets, permission set groups uh, to various users based on various roles, um, rules that you can define. To access user access policy, you go to your setup and just type user access. And you will see something called user access policies. Um, you can create a new one. And this is what it looks like. It's very um, simple to create. You can say who are the applicable users. So for example, you can say, you know, all sales profile. If I'm creating a user with a sales profile, I want to assign them these permission sets. I want to assign them these groups and so on. So you can get pretty granular here. Um, I ran into a limitation one time where um, we needed the rule to fire on a multi-select pick list. So that's still not available. And then there are various statuses here. You can go to design. That means you can edit things and play around with that. Once you do active, you cannot update um, over there. Now that it's in design, I can go in and say, you can add multiple values here. And then you can also do fields based on the user and add values. And then you can grant access. So in this case, I'm saying, add action, grant, permission set, group, permission set, license, and queue as well. So you can add users as they are being created to various queues and groups without having to create a flow or automation. So if you are still using flows and automations to automatically assign users, highly recommend checking out user access policies. This is not a new feature. I think it was introduced like one or two releases before, but they have added this group and queue newly to this. So play around with this. And if you need a more in-depth video on user access policies, also please let me know in the comments. 
Thank you so much for watching and please let me know what are your favorite features and what are you most excited about for uh, Spring 24. Thank you.